You are thinking about bondage? If you marry a non-understanding wife that is slavery. If you are unhappy in marriage, that is bondage. Our question to you is, do you love her? Then the question of punishment and bondage jewelry is nothing. You have seen that even in our home, the cousin boys get punished if they must behave. And we must tell you a secret. Once when we were younger we had gone out and we looked at a boy and talked between ourselves that we should kiss him. You know what our mother did when she came to know? She gave us a strange punishment. She pierced our septum and got a ring and chain and we used to go out with the chain in her hands and we followed her like tied up slaves. At home she tied the chain to the bed. But removed it later when we promised to obey and not do inappropriate things for young girls from families like ours. So the question is, do you love her enough to take on this challenge? But we must say it's a pleasurable challenge. After all, it is Yudu's mother who pierced your nose and made you wear a nose ring. Your life got saved, you are none the worse for it. Do not forget what the priest in Devi Ma's temple told you. That Ma will find a way. And this seems to be the way. But at the end, it's your decision, they said. Madhu was trembling when he heard his cousin. Sisters. What do you think they will do to me after childbirth? He asked again. Do you have objections to be a full woman? They said. I am afraid. He replied. Every girl is afraid before marriage. You being afraid of shows you are more girl than boy. But let us tell you, boys are scared too. For what type of wife will they get, for times are changing even in villages, they spoke. He gulped down the fear, for his question was how will I become a full-fledged girl if at all. He was not going to ask. But there was a last question in his mind which he had to ask. My mother would have wanted me to wear our family nath for the wedding. And the Singh family would like the groom, bride to wear their family nath. If I choose that, I will feel I am betraying mother. If I choose ours, Singh family could object. What to do during the wedding? And what about, later in family life? He asked, the younger cousin sister who was closely following every word of the conversation now when she also had a prodigious memory came up with an idea. I have a unique idea. It has never happened before. You told me the stem, wire of the same family Nath is thin at a place where it goes through the nose piercing and we can see our family Nath is also thin at the same place. Just for once, for once only, during the wedding you can wear both naths together. On your left nostril piercing hole. How is that? She asked. That seems like a good possible solution. Madhu what do you say? The elder sister was thrilled. Madhu thought about the pain of inserting two naths and the weight and hesitated. Then he remembered that stem of the nose ring Yadu's mother gifted. Him was thick, so his pierced hole was also of a good size. He rummaged through the cupboard and found the box and took out the gift nose ring. Estimated, that the thickness of this one stem was just about the same as the thin portion of both the bridal gnats combined. He imagined the two gnats on his nose and swinging and striking against each other and the heaviness of the two. He imagined the chain striking against his cheeks and closed his eyes for a second and took a deep breath. The pain pleasure and arousal of it may be worth it, he thought. And it was probably a once in a lifetime event. He looked at his sisters, lowered his head shyly. MMM. Okay, he said, and bent down to touch his elder sister's feet. They had tears in their eyes. They blessed him. His eyes too watered, but there was a shine of sweet painful expectation. Everyone in the other room was waiting in suspense. But the sisters had an idea. They brought out her. Dhagra Choli and quickly adorned him.
put pile on his feet and bangles, brushed his hair back, put a bindi, danglers, and then put the nose ring, gifted by Vanshi Maji on his nostril. This would pass a powerful message of liking and respect. Then they held his hand and took him to the other room where all were waiting. So Madhu who was a boy barely an hour back, was now attired like a girl and brought to the girl meet boy and families. Meet to discuss wedding proposal, event room. Everyone was stunned, for Madhu looked gorgeous. His girly dress said something, but they were waiting to hear from him explicitly as to what were his thoughts and what was his decision. Madhu could barely look up. Yidu got up and looked at him and Madhu looked at her for a second and lowered his eyes. He felt blood rushing to his face. The sisters prompted him. The Mishra clan looked towards him expectantly. Yidu's parents were bowled over by his makeover. Yidu's mother was touched that Madhu was wearing her gift, the same nose ring. They all awaited with bated breath as to what would Madhu say. Madhu was so overcome by the moment that covered his face with his hands for he felt a terribly shy. And the cousin. Sisters explained in detail all they had discussed including the feminization and bondage questions. They kept the two Nath discussion as a secret. For the time being. What do you say Madhu? They all asked. His heart was racing. He could hear his heart beating too. Blood rushed to his dusky face and they could see his ears turn red. He silently nodded yes. Madhu's uncles exulted and all stood up to voice their consent in unison. We all would gladly give our family's son-daughter's hand in marriage to your family's heir. Now the Mishra family tradition of the Nath would be carried forward in. Madhu will wear the Nath at the wedding, they said. Now it was the turn of Yadu's mother to raise a concern. No, we have our tradition and the sing. Family Nath has to be worn during the wedding by the groom bride, she said. There was a shocked silence for seconds. Will this be a show? Stopper? Everyone was worried. Then Madhu's cousin sisters explained the plan. There was a palpable sigh of relief in the room. It was only Madhu who lowered his eyes out of modesty. Yadu's mother came then came forward. Thank you for being so accommodating and flexible. Madhu will adorn the unique two nats as a bride. Daily wear will be Madhu's choice. For some female-only festivals, the choice of jewels will be Madhu's and some other festivals Yadu's and we parents will decide for family festivals. But we have full confidence that Madhu will always keep our family interest in mind. Thank you, she said. It was a beautiful moment. To be savored and treasured for all times to come. Sweets were brought out and all exchanged and each hugged the other. Yadu's parents came and made Madhu and Yadu stand beside them and hugged them both. We so far had a Betty who is a beta. Now we have a beta who is a Betty. We are overwhelmed. Now we will go and seek Devi Ma's blessings and will contact you soon for engagement ceremony and wedding arrangements, they said. There was one final thing left for the day. Yadu's mother sat on the low seat and spoke. I am going to demonstrate what I mean when I say family traditions and submissive ghar jamai who will be wife, she said. They watched with trepidation. She called Madhu over and asked him to sit on the ground nearby her. She then told him to lift the ghagra a bit and show his feet and ankle. His obediently sat. She asked Yadu to assist in what was going to happen next. She looked at her husband Yadavendra Singh. A silent message passed between them. His hands went to his golden neck chain and he took it off and opened the clasp. There was a small silver key. Hanging. He took it out and gave it to Yadu to pass it on to her mother. She did so. Yadu's mother spoke loud, so all could hear. Our word is given to you today. 
One last time, are you all sure? Do you give your word on our agreement? That you will give Madhu's hand in marriage? To our Yadu, unconditionally, she asked. All were mesmerized, and there was not one voice of objection. They didn't know what was going to happen. The consent for the joining of Madhu and Yadu was already agreed. No one could go back now. Yadu's mother lifted her sari to reveal the beautiful heavy silver caddis from her own ankles. The chain was visible too, which connected her to caddis. She asked Yadu to come forward and help. Yadu knew all about the bondage and what all her stepmother had to undergo and why. Now the time had come to pass on to the next generation. Yudu came and removed the chain from her mother's ankle and used the key to open the lock of the cadders. Yudu's mother signaled to Yudu to do the needful. The authority of the feudal Singh's family was unmistakable now and no one could question it. There was a submissive silence and atmosphere in the room. Yudu didn't hesitate. Before Madhu could think what was happening, Yudu placed the cadder. On Madhu's right ankle and clicked shut and turned the key. Vintage jewelry old silver foot bracelet anklet kadato bondage chain it was locked in. Place. She did the same to the cadder for the left ankle. The cadders had a small metal loop on the inside. Then Yudu used the two clasps in the chain. To connect the cadders. Yudu took off her necklace and opened the clasp and the cadder key was soon hanging in the necklace and Yudu placed the necklace back on herself. There was an audible gasp from every member of the Mishra clan. Madhu was totally mortified. He started to cry. There was no reversing possible now. The cadder and chain could not be removed by anyone except Yudu, his husband-to-be. His life in bondage was starting. How many such bondages, humiliations, piercings he will face, he didn't know. He was yet to understand a little of the pain pleasure of being a bride a slave daughter in law and a wife which he soon would be. The Mishra clan hung their heads. What had they done to Madhu? Yidu looked around and again triumphantly announced in ringing tones. Please note that Madhu's name is changed from now. It will be Madhu Bandwa. Madhu who is in bondage. Soon it will be. Madhu Dwinath, two nose ringed, Singh, of Singh family, Bandwa, in bondage, Devrani, daughter-in-law. Madhu started sobbing uncontrollably. Yadu, came near him and spoke. Indian girl with downcast eyes please get up. She said. But he couldn't. He was broke down completely. His body was raking with sobs. Get up now and stop it. Yidu said a little sharply, but her mother intervened. A look from her was enough and Yidu became silent. Yidu's mother gently lifted Madhu. And used her pallu to wipe Madhu's tears. Betty, child, daughter, you have again come to my rescue. First when you were so well behaved with Yadu. Then when you said yes to our proposal against so many odds. Now you have taken on my burden in life. The cadder and chain. I kept it for 18 long years. Thank you. Soon you will help carry forward the lineage of the family by giving us a seed. She said and kissed him on his forehead. Madhu was quieter now but still crying. His sisters came to him and consoled him. It is not easy to be a woman. You are already spared of the monthly pain of periods, the burden of carrying a child in the womb. Of childbirth. Don't worry. All will be well. You will find the strength to face the challenges, they said. Somewhat mollified Madhu used the hem of his dhagra which he lifted to wipe his tears again. All saw the chain and cadders. Yidu came up to him and looked straight into his eyes. She held his face in her hands like a boy will do to a girl. I am looking forward to the day, you joining me for a life of togetherness very soon. I can barely wait for the engagement and wedding later. 
Don't make me wait too much. I cannot bear it. I love you, she said. There was a softening in her eyes. And even a little glistening. Madhu's eyes were already soft and reflected shame. Madhu mumbled. I underscore 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 you too. He was barely audible. The Singhs left after thanking everyone and saying bye. The Mishra family which was frozen into silence, started to thank them and accompanied them to the send-off. Yadu's mother, called in the last word. The nose ring, do not take it off. You look beautiful in it. Madhu's sisters held Madhu's bangle-clad hands and helped him walk back inside. He struggled to walk with the chained legs and heavy ghagra. The sisters giggled and teased him. Now soon you will have a Nath Utaro ceremony, they said. You are to blame too. And I will take my revenge when I push you into your hubby's room for the Nath Utaro, which you too will have. Madhu blushed furiously and said. They giggled at each other, and a smile broke in between them. The sweet feminization by sisters will not be the only thing Madhu will face, as he has to face a forced feminization and bondage too in a life, which he had chosen, or was it his karma, his destiny, uncontrollable. Madhu started to walk with short steps towards the place, where he can wash his tear streaked face. The tears in the nose ring reflected the light. Back to his eyes. The soft sweet sound of, cham cham, of the pile was interspersed with the slightly stronger, clink clink, of the chain as he could feel the heaviness of his bondage cadder. The sound of clink clink which reached everyone's ears. Life had arrived with sweet bitterness. Expectation and fear, love and bondage, humiliation and beauty but most of all like a turbulent storm for Madhusudan Mishra, Madhu Bandwa. Thus the day ended for the Mishra family and the Singh family. For Yadu who returned with a winning a bride, but for Madhu, a new life of feminization. As a future transformation to Madhu Dwinat Singh Bandwa Devrani, from now on he is on an irreversible path of becoming a property of Yaduvanshi Singh, the heiress of the Yadavendra Singh family. With a septum ring and chain handed over to his husband or should we say, her husband? Madhu was very tired after the momentous events of the day. He walked around with difficulty and was often tearing up, feeling the chain and the cadder. In his ankle, he was wondering what he had led himself into. Every task of the day appeared challenging. He couldn't change into a salva kameez for. The chain permitted only an open dress like a sari, skirt or petticoat or lahinga. He tried lying down on his bed and felt the chain come in. Between his ankles, he continued to shed silent tears. He went into the room where the Divine Mother's home shrine was there and shed copious tears. And spoke to her, sharing his agony. The small idol was shining during dusk in the lamplight. Meanwhile, Yadu and her parents had left in the horse-drawn royal buggy. Yadu was in a contemplative mood. She started to speak. Ma you were wearing the cadder and the chain, because you were married and yet no children born survived and you both wanted to propitiate the devtas, no? She asked her mother. Yes beta, mother replied. So is it appropriate to even think of the devtas now? When I and Madhu aren't married as yet. Yadu continued. And how can we even think of children, when we aren't even married? Yadavendra Singh looked at his wife and lifted an eyebrow and pay. Gesture seemed to say that, Yadu has a point. Yadu's mother asked, I understand what you are saying, but then what about the bondage and submission? And subjugation agenda of our family? Isn't that served with the chain and cadder? Yadu thought and answered, Well yes, but then we are going to get. Madhu's septum pierced and post-marriage put a special ring and a removable chain. 
they continued to journey back and discussed the subject. It seemed that they wanted the chain and didn't want it too. Wanted the bondage and didn't as well. Was it fair or unfair they were thinking? They reached home. And Yedu's father went into the strong room and brought out another velvet box and opened it and lifted the jewelry inside too. The clear sound of. And a small jewelry box. Yedu's eyes were shining as the three looked at that and a silent message passed between them. They nodded assent to the thought. Meanwhile, the pundit they had called home, arrived late evening. They discussed the matter of a wedding, dates, the faults in the horoscope and what to do about that and so on. Propitiating the devtas also came up as a subject and they discussed it. His view was that according to astrological calculations they were not under the malefic influence of the evil eye of some powers and they can be at rest. Should they want to play safe with extra precautions they can follow earlier practices on the new moon day or Saturdays when some malefic influences could rear their head. They then had dinner before the Pandit left. Yedu told her parents that she will go to the Mishra household tomorrow early morning along with the box they had taken out earlier and asked her parents to trust her that she will do the right thing for her family. That night was a bad night for Madhu. His sleep was disturbed and getting used to all the happenings and the visible symbols and his bondage was a challenge he wasn't up to. Yedu slept well but got up early and got ready. The buggy was all set. She alone got in with a Sarati, one who drives a horse-drawn buggy, come attendant and they started to move at a fast pace. She had the box they were looking at the previous night, in her hand in the buggy. The buggy moved towards Madhu's house. As soon as she reached and got down and started moving towards Madhu's home on foot, some members of the family saw her, from the window, walking. Surely and with firm steps towards their home's door. There was an attendant tagging along with a box in his hand. There was commotion. Yadu is, coming, Yadu is coming. Butir is, sorry our to be, son-in-law, is coming. Madhu's, to be hubby, is coming. Where is Madhu? Madhu had gotten up and had completed the morning routine with difficulty and was in the kitchen learning some chores that would be part of his lot later. After marriage, so he, she, might as well learn something. He got a start when he heard Yadu's name and started to move towards the entrance door. With expectation and trepidation. He tried to run but couldn't as the chain restricted his stride. As Yadu strode in royally and looked at a tired and sad looking face of Madhu, which appeared to brighten up at seeing her. Madhu lowered his eyes. Too, as a shy girl would at the arrival of her fiancé. Half of the family welcomed Yadu as she came in and stood near a chair waiting for all to be seated. Madhu came near her, barely sensed what he was doing, as he felt compelled and so bent down and touched Yadu's feet reverentially. Yadu looked at him with love and ownership but he couldn't meet her eyes. Yadu said, I have come and want Madhu's cousin sisters to come as I want to talk about some issues with them and Madhu. Do you have a Devi Ma's home? Shrine room? Is there some privacy there? One of Madhu's uncles said yes and gestured towards that room. Yadu was offered water in a silver tumbler. They asked her if she would like to have breakfast as they would be honored. She declined and by that time Madhu's sisters were there too. The foursome moved towards the shrine and they closed the door behind them. Yadu took the box from the attendant's hand and carried it to that private holy room with her. They all settled down on the ground on mats and Yadu started to speak. Madhu I have brought some valuable gifts for you. Madhu's eyes brightened up as he looked at her with love and a bit of fear too. Yadu opened the box carefully and took out some of its contents. 
There was a beautiful pair of heavy silver cadders with ghungroos. That made a huge noise as Yadu took them out. There was a chain separately kept in the box too. Madhu looked at the items and his hand went to his mouth as he stifled a cry. His eyes registered fear and he was frozen. Yadu gestured to Madhu's cousin sisters to place this new adornment on Madhu's feet. They were shocked and trembled at this new thing which Yadu called a gift. They had no choice and took the cadders with ghungroos which were a little larger than the earlier cadders and neared Madhu as he shivered with fear. They placed it on both his ankles and clicked shut the cadders. Yidu looked at them firmly and calmly and gave them what appeared to be a key. They took it and locked the new set of ankle cadder cum ghungroos and gave the keys back to Yidu. She placed it on her necklace again and said with a slight smile. At this rate, I will need a separate keychain for the many keys and it is best that I keep the bunch at my waist. Yidu continued. Madhu get up and walk and show me. Madhu felt that he saw some evil enter Yadu but was helpless as he had to do her bidding. Ankle cadder with bells Madhu got up with support of his cousin sisters as his feet were weak and he was on the verge of collapsing into utter despair, waiting for the additional chain. He was spared the additional chain for now. The heaviness at his ankles weighed him down with the cadders. With a great effort of will he stared to walk within the room. There were multiple sounds emanating from his feet. A soft, cham cham, from his pile, clink clink, of the chain falling on the floor and being dragged and a slightly metallic, clunk clunk, as the cadders rose and fell on each other. The loudest was the, chal 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 chal, from the new cadders with ghungroos. The sound of bondage and feminization. A welcome. Feminization earlier, now, had become a forced bondage transformation with no end in sight. Yidu gestured to Madhu to come near her and stand. He did that as he felt a wave of tremor pass through him. Yidu asked him to close his eyes and keep it closed. Now the cousin's feeling of being shocked was overcome by some curiosity. As Yadu took another key from her necklace and reached for Madhu's ankle. Madhu unlocked the chain and removed it from both the sides where it was attached earlier to the cadders and put it into the box. Alongside the other chain already lying there. Then she unlocked the previous cadders, removed them from Madhu's feet also and kept them in the box. She seemed to have no intent to place any chains on Madhu for now much to their relief. Yadu asked Madhu to open his eyes and look at his feet. He saw the chain was removed and a huge sigh came out of him. And he collapsed out of relief. And looked at Yadu with grateful eyes. Yadu explained, we had discussed and felt this was inappropriate for now. So, however I do hope you like the Gungru Kada. Madhu looked at his ankle and shook them a bit as the strong but feminine sound of the chal chal filled the room. He nodded his assent and liking. But remember, this too is locked and you can't take it out unless I do so for you. Said Yadu. Madhu spoke in a feeble voice. I love these as they will remind me of you when I walk or even move. The sisters looked at Yadu quizzically as to why this and what will happen to the previous cadder and chain. Yadu said, well the pundit said that the malefic devtas have more or less vanished from our lives for now but, as a precaution we may want to take steps to propitiate them on new moon day. Or maybe Saturdays in every month. So my mother will wear this only on those days. Now Madhu let out a cry of protest. No, that is so unfair. She is a kind soul and I love and respect her. Yidu looked at Madhu and a softness entered her eyes. Madhu you love my mother, no? Madhu nodded yes and said in a small voice. Is it okay if I take on that responsibility on Saturdays and new moon days? 
Madhu's cousin sisters said in protest, What? Are you saying Madhu? Madhu said, I love when she Maji. If I am alive today, it is because of her. Can't I take this responsibility on just a day of the week? I am not going to run away from this difficulty. I will wear the kadar and chain on Saturdays and new moon days. Yidu looked at Madhu gratefully and said, I don't know what to say and how to thank you. You are so considerate. It was tears of love and happiness in Yidu's eyes now. I will keep these cadres and chain and the keys in Devi Ma's shrine here and you can do as promised on those days. Yidu looked at Madhu's cousin, sisters and asked them, will you help? They were mollified by now and said in unison, show. Yidu said, I still have something left before I leave today. 16 GA UGE Septum Jewelry Rose Gold Septum Hoop Gold Nose Ring Pink Gold Cartilage Ring Conch Tragus Brow Lip NO00 E500 Now. What this next surprise was the expression in the face of Madhu and his cousin sisters. Yadu took out a small case and took out a ring from that and said, now we are discussing wedding dates and so don't you think it would be a good idea to get Madhu's septum pierced in advance, so it is not bleeding on the wedding day? Madhu lowered his face again as he started to color up. The cousin sister said simultaneously, makes sense, as they looked at the simple tiny huggy septum ring in gold. Yidu came near Madhu and lifted. His face with her hand and took the septum ring near his nose and whispered, so only he could hear. I am waiting for the day when you will become mine fully and walk behind me as I hold the chain attached to your septum ring in my hand. That night, I will take off your two gnats and pull you towards me with the septum chain and take you, very gently, okay? Madhu blushed furiously and whispered back in an almost inaudible voice. I am waiting to become fully yours. Yedu said, don't worry I will remove the chain from your septum ring if you make efforts to please me. Madhu was totally silent as his face heated up even more as more blood rushed to his face. What if I hurt you? Asked Yedu when Madhu said, since I am yours. You can do anything with me. Yidu playfully bit his ear and softly said, You wait, I have planned a lot for you. On our becoming parents, I will gift you a navel ring. I will fill your ears with beautiful jewelry with multiple piercings to mark milestones in our lives together. Madhu closed his eyes in ecstasy just thinking about it all, including secret forbidden jewelry and feminization steps and Yudu started to disengage. The cousin sisters exchanged meaningful glances and said, You love birds better come down to earth as everyone is waiting outside this room to know what is happening. Yudu gave them the septum ring and said, This is now your responsibility to get Madhu to be prepared. And they giggled, naughtily as they took it and carefully placed it at Devi Ma's feet. They all trooped out to Madhu's cadder's sound of chal 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 chal, drowning out the softer cham cham of the pile. Yidu looked at all of the Mishra household, while Madhu lifted his ghagra and they saw a hey, new adornment. They also saw that the chain has been removed and there was an audible lightening of the atmosphere. Yidu said, the sisters in Madhu will fill in the details and please permit me to go back home as there are lots to do for me today. They nodded assent and saw Yadu off. Madhu almost ran behind the buggy as he held himself in check with immense willpower. The sound of chal 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 echoed across the Misra household and seemed to have replaced the jarring note of bondage. Clink clink. The sound of Chal Chal reminded Madhu of the eternal presence of Yadu in his life as he awaited developments for the event of bonding, not bondage, he. Wedding. The cousins looked forward with anticipation, 
planning the septum piercing of Madhu and placing the pre-wedding ring there soon. They had that responsibility and not to forget, they also had the responsibility of helping Madhu with the Saturday full moon bondage to remind him that he can never step out of line and he was Yadu's belonging. Epilogue When Yadu's mother and father heard of Madhu volunteering to be in the Kadar and chains to spare when she Maji from this, they were so overwhelmed that they too were eagerly waiting for the event that would bring their daughter-in-law come son into their household. They already loved Madhu as much as Yadu. The things were moving towards a happier note. The Singh family had relatives visiting them from the north of India. It was a distant cousin's daughter, Janvi, who had fallen in love with a Kashmiri Pandit boy and married him. It was Janvi who was visiting them along with her parents. She had got married recently and was in full bridal finery. Yedu was very happy to see them as she was close to her second cousin's sister. The two girls exchanged notes and Yedu related all that had happened to herself and Madhu. Janvi was very curious and keen to meet Madhu and so Madhu was called, summoned would be a better word. Madhu was told that he should come fully decked in jewels and also bring stuff given to her earlier. Madhu's cousin sisters were also invited. There was excitement in the air. The day came and the three Mishra family, girls, moved by horse cart to Yadu's place. Madhu had selected his best dresses and was wearing a beautiful lahenga and choli with midriff barely exposed and wearing swinging giant-sized junkies and of course the Kada Ghungru was going chal chal when he walked. He wore a pile too and his toenails were done up and pained. He was wearing matching two dozen bangles on each hand which too were making a sweet noise as he raised his hands to move away a long strand of hair from his face. His hair had grown long. His bindi and gold necklace were matching with his dress. The cousins had rigged up artificial breasts and the necklace fell between his protruding breasts. His favorite nose ring, gifted by Wenshi Maji, completed his adornment. His cousin sisters remarked, Hey beautiful, and he blushed furiously. They continued to tease him. Throughout the journey, Yedu will not allow you to come back home today, you are looking so fetchingly lovely. In fact there will be a wedding in, a wedding night today itself. Madhu hid his face in his hands feeling extremely shy is also a tinge of fear and excitement. They reached Yadu's home and were duly welcomed. As Yadu came from inside to greet them Madhu was glowing with happiness. Yadu looked at him stunned. At his beauty, enhanced by not just his dress and adornments but palpable love which gave his entire being an extra energy and glow. She took him into her arms and had to fight the urge to kiss him as he closed his eyes for he could not face her. Janvi, looked at Madhu and the Yadu. Madhu pair and was shocked that how could Yadu say Madhu was a boy, he was a girl and no less. She came and took Madhu's hands and pulled him towards herself and hugged him like a girl would hug another one. Madhu was overwhelmed. This is the beautiful life of girls he thought. Yedu held his hands and pulled him towards the house. He lowered his head and breathless with emotion he moved in the direction of the pull. The Dhungru Kada went chal chal chal. Yedu's parents came in when she Maji hugged Madhu and said, Beta, Betty when will you come home here? We are eagerly awaiting your becoming a part of our household. And your responsible loving suggestion about the cadder and chain has overwhelmed us. Madhu's eyes clouded for a second but were again filled with happiness as he fell at when she Ma's feet. The elders decided to leave them alone. There was one more person, apparently a tribal lady, who was clearly an outsider but seemed to be well known. To the household who walked in and said, Yaduji please call me whenever you need. Will do so Kusumji, 
said Yudu as the mysterious lady disappeared into the house. She had a bag which she held on to dearly. She had a dozen piercings in her ears and multiple nose rings, multiple cadders in her hands and feet, multiple necklaces and a low slung skirt which was still her knee only in a mini blouse with her ample bosom almost spilling out. Her midriff was bare with many tattoos. Her midriff exposed a deep stomach and a long navel with a piercing and a dangling chain making it very attractive to look at. Waist chains with bells tickling when her hips swung wildly made her the sinusure of eyes. Every toe of hers had a ring with bells. Thick gungroos just below the cadders and her feet almost disappeared in adornments. Her blouse had elaborate mirror work and she had gajra flowers in her hair. Her blouse had bells at the edge around her mid. She noisily left the room and Madhu raised his eyebrows, which were done up. And his eyes seemed to ask who is she and why is she here? Yidu understood and answered, soon you will know. The four girls and the girl, Madhu, hit it off instantly and were chatting away to glory for a long time. Like girls, their heads were bobbing up and down and sideways and they gesticulated as they spoke. Madhu thoroughly enjoyed the togetherness and every time he gesticulated his bangles made sweet sound. It was clear that Madhu and Yadu were smitten with each other but there was a slight edge that Yadu had and it was clear that she was the dominant one in the relationship. Janvi too was shaking her head and often gesticulating with her hands. She spoke about what it was to be a Kashmiri bride to a pundit. She was specially dressed as a Kashmiri recently married woman. They were all fascinated to know about this exotic culture and its trappings and rituals. She spoke about the dresses, the place, the jewellery and so on. Madhu's eyes often went to Janvi's face and he saw a strange ear chain which reached up to her shoulders and went through a hole in the inside cartilage of her ear. Yidu followed Madhu's eyes and saw what he was looking at. Janvi saw both of them looking at her. She started to explain that it was the Dejur Athar and Athur. The Dejur being a golden mystic symbol. Dejur, on one end of the chain which went through the cartilage hole. The hole was quite sizable for the thin gold chain had to pass through in. The chain obviously was not held in place and could move and slide too. This golden chain, she explained was the, atta. The end of the chain which was dangling and reached her shoulders had not just the dejur but also. An, atur which was another golden piece which was attached at the end of the mystic yantra symbol, Dejur. The chain could not be taken out, without removing these golden end pieces. Thus, it appeared locked in. Janvi explained that this was another Mangal Sutra equivalent, which is not removed even if a married woman lose her husband. Janvi said further that while to piercing can be done earlier, the dejur is given during the lagan, one day before the wedding. On the wedding day, it is a red thread that is used for hanging the dejur but when the bride enters her husband's home, she is given golden chains which replace the red thread and thus, the combined three pieces is called a akheru. Kashmiri Pandit Dehjor they marveled at the elaborate description of everything and suddenly Janvi got up with a start and said I will just return. All were curious as to what was happening. Meanwhile, Yudu secretly looked at Madhu and took her hand to her ears and caressed her. Cartilage and her hands were flowing towards her shoulders as if a chain was there and she was caressing it and raised eyebrow which said it all. Then she mouthed, Madhu, would you like this? Madhu colored up and gave an almost imperceptible nod, yes. Meanwhile, Janvi returned and told everyone to close their eyes and keep their palms in their laps. She dropped a box in each lap but the box in Madhu's and Yadu's lap was a little bigger.
The cousin sisters could hardly wait to open their gift but held their cool. Janvi spoke, Go on Yadu and Madhu, open the box. They opened it and, guess what the boxes had, Dejur, Atar and Atur, only one set which was split up between the boxes that Yadu and Madhu held in their hands. All pieces and chains were in gold and there was a spare red thread too. Yadu was thrilled and thanked Janvi profusely. Janvi looked at Madhu and asked, Do you like it? He lowered his face as it became beetroot red and nodded yes. Janvi then asked a redundant question, Madhu will. You wear it? The piercing is very very painful. Madhu could hardly look up and answer when Yadu answered for him, of course he will. After all, I want my bride to experience every single speciality of brides in India. And Yadu poked at Janvi and said mischievously, What about the first night? What are you holding back from telling us Janvi? It was Janvi's turn to blush. Yadu suddenly got up and said, Now is my turn to present a surprise. She yelled, Kusumji. And the lady came swinging her hips with bells making a noise with very movement. She announced, Yaduji as you suggested I have brought everything, and she showed a small box in her palm and opened her bag to show some tools and needles and some other stuff. Then Yadu asked, Madhu today can be special day for you. Will you accept some pain? Madhu looked stricken and didn't know what to say. Come on Madhu, it is nothing new for you. The cousins protested, please tell us what is it. Madhu grandly took the box from Kusum's hands and opened and showed them all. There was a huggy septum ring, an identical one to what she had. Given them some time back and there was a pair of ear studs with very thick stems. Yadu explained, soon we will be fixing a date for the wedding in. There is no time. If okay with you guys, we will make this a special day for Madhu. We will pierce his septum and also his upper ear cartilage. There was a stunned silence. They understood that the septum piercing can be followed by fitting the septum ring and the cartilage piercing can be followed by fixing the thick stem stud for sizable holes in the cartilage for the dejure etc at the time of wedding but the piercing can be today. Madhu shut his eyes tight as he imagined the next level of transformation and bondage and pain. Yadu's voice became a little authoritative as she asked, What do you say Madhu? He looked stricken and nodded feebly. He didn't have a choice. His hubby-to-be had spoken and a deal was a deal. His cousin sisters looked on with trepidation. But we haven't brought the septum ring you gave us earlier for Madhu and have left it at home. Madhu said, Naturally I had not alerted you and wanted this to be a surprise and have made arrangements for a duplicate septum ring. Janvi looked thrilled and also a little afraid as she relived the pain she had undergone. They fussed about Madhu as Kusum sat near him and took out the tools of the trade. She elaborately applied some herbal preparation on his cartilage and his septum and told him to close his eyes. Kusum gestured to the cousins to hold his hands and Yadu herself held his head from the back and said, Madhu stay still and don't move your head even one bit. He looked absolutely petrified and screwed his eyes shut. Kusum took a needle and held his Nose and slightly pulled at the skin at the bottom to see the septum properly as she inserted the needle through the flesh. Madhu yelped as tears came to his eyes. Kusum quickly took the huggy septum ring, pulled open a bit and inserted it into the freshly made hole. Rotated it as the open end came out from below and then pressed it shut till the joint was almost invisible. It was over in a jiffy. She wiped the blood from the piercing with clean cotton and applied the herbal preparation. The golden ring glowed in the daylight. It wasn't over yet. Kusum gestured Janvi to hold Madhu's ears. 
She did that dutifully. Kusum took a special tool meant to make not just a hole but take away a minor round part of skin like they do to make a hole in a belt. She told Madhu, brace yourself, for this is going to be hell of a pain. The other piercings are nothing compared to this. By now Madhu was scared to death and was trembling. Kusum took the tool and carefully placed it in the inside cartilage. It was like a plier. She pressed. Madhu screamed. Blood came pouring and a small part of the flesh came away from pay. Cartilage and a faint hole could be seen through and through. Kusum wasted no time at all. She quickly shifted to the other side and Madhu let out a blood-curdling scream as the tool took away flesh on this ear. The blood flow had to be stopped. The wound was cleaned. Kusum asked Janvi if she will put the golden stud. Janvi nodded and pushed the stud through the hole and Madhu screamed again. The stud was mated with the screw at its back and was in place. Kusum gestured to Yadu. Yadu then took the other stud and spoke. Madhu I am going to insert the other stud. Madhu whimpered and bit his tongue. Yadu pressed the stud through the hole and screwed the mating part. At the back, Yadu felt a sense of climax with the piercings of the day to the bride in her life. They all let go of Madhu as he was still agonized by all the pain. His nose was hurting but it was his ears which were throbbing with pain. Kusum took out a mirror from her bag and showed Madhu. He looked at the septum ring and a tremor passed through him as he imagined the day his septum ring would be replaced by a bigger one which will have a chain to be held by Yadu. Then he looked at his cartilage studs and almost felt the chains. Passing through them to hang almost till his shoulder with sealed joints that it cannot be taken out without cutting it away. Then he looked at Janvi. She seemed at ease and was looking at him with wonder. Madhu's cousin sisters were looking at him with a mixture of curiosity and what looked like envy. Yudu looked at him as she sensed that he belonged to her alone. Madhu closed his eyes for a moment. And imagined life as Yadu's bride soon, the wedding with his twin nose rings and stepping into Yadu's home as her wife when the red thread will be replaced by golden ones but nevertheless chains but he was looking forward with a little fear and pain but equally hope and love. His life was flowing into Yadu's hands with each day. Madhu's cousin sisters suddenly remembered and chimed together. We will send you the septum ring soon as you have already taken care of that for Madhu today. A look of mischief came into Yadu's eyes as she said, Well, I am gifting it for you guys. In fact I have one more so both of you. Sisters can have one each. The cousin sisters colored up. Then Yadu looked at Janvi. Would you like one too? Janvi too blushed. That is not. The Kashmiri practice and can't do that though I am tempted. It looks beautiful. Yidu spoke again. Hey, Kusumji is here should you want to take. Advantage for septum piercing or any other ones. She is trained. The cousin sisters said in unison. No, not today. Yidu said. What about? Tattoos? They settled for Mehandi which was a temporary one. Madhu and his cousin sisters left for home soon taking leave of Yadu's family. Thus ended an eventful day.